Hello guys, in this video we are going to talk about a very exciting topic, the periodic table. It was first published by Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev in 1869. And while he published the periodic table, he not only corrected the then accepted properties of the sum elements that were already known, but he also predicted the properties of eight elements that were yet to be discovered. So, to be fair, he wasn't the only scientist who figured out the relationship between different elements. However, he was probably the most dedicated about it. I could talk about this topic for hours, but I'm going to link a video below from Crash Course Chemistry, and they summarize really well the history of Mendeleev. So, what is in the periodic table? In the uh, periodic table, the elements are arranged in order of atomic number. Remember that the atomic number is the number of protons in an element. So, if we look at this table here, we can see that hydrogen, this is the first element, contains one proton. Helium contains two protons. Lithium contains three protons. Beryllium contains four protons. So, if we generally look at the representation, if we zoom in, let's say, a carbon atom, right, you will see the atomic number on the upper either corner or in the center sometimes it's in the corner sometimes it's in the center and below the element symbol quite often you are going to see the atomic weight the atomic weight of carbon is 12.011 in this periodic table that we are using right now we are omitting it because it is not important for us but just remember, we are going to have the atomic number on top in the periodic table and the atomic weight on the bottom. Okay, so what is the arrangement of the periodic table? You can see actually that there are numbered rows and columns. So the rows, these horizontal rows, are called periods, and the columns are called groups, okay? These are these columns right here, second, third, fourth, and so forth. We actually have the so-called main group elements. So the main groups have their different numbering. So the first main group, 1a, is the first group, okay? The second group is, main group, is 2a, which is right here. Then we have 3a, 4a, 5a, 6a, 7a, and 8a. Now, it is really good to know what are the names of these main groups. So, the 1A group, this group right here, is called the alkali metals. Actually, hydrogen is not an alkali metal. It is a non-metal, but all the other elements in this group 1A are going to be alkali metals. Group 2A, these elements right here, are called alkaline earth metals. Then another important group that you should know about is the group 6A right here, which are the chalcogens, and the 7A that we, we are going to use quite often, and these are the halogens, okay? and the cool kids of the periodic table are the noble gases. And I'm saying it this way because you are going to soon learn that every single element in the periodic table would like to be a noble gas. We're going to talk about it a little bit more in the next video. But for now, let's take a look at the different arrangements of the elements in the periodic table. 
So we know that we can see the atomic number on the top, right? And everything is arranged based on the atomic number. Now the elements on the left side are called metals. Okay, all the metals are shiny lusters, they conduct heat and electricity well, and they are solids with an exception of mercury. Nonmetals are going to be on the other side, on the right side of the periodic table, and also hydrogen. Hydrogen is a nonmetal. These elements uh, can be both solids, liquids, and gases, okay? And you can see that we have a third type of element in this periodic table, and those elements are situated on this step-like line right here. So this is the line that divides metals from non-metals and most of the elements there are going to be so-called metalloids so they can have the properties both metals and non-metals a couple of exceptions are aluminum which is a metal polonium which is also a metal and uh, acetine which is a non-metal all other elements on this step-like line are going to be metalloids. All right, so let's take a look at a simple question. There are blank electrons, blank protons, and blank neutrons in an atom of O16. So basically here we have to figure out how many electrons, how many protons, and how many neutrons do we have in an atom of oxygen 16. Now, what does this 16 mean? This is actually the uh, mass number, right? The mass number consists of the number of neutrons plus the number of protons. Now, how do I find either one of those? Well, I can take a look at the periodic table. And in the periodic table, I know that if I find oxygen, look for oxygen. Which element is that? What is the number of that element? It is element number eight, right? And this eight is the atomic number. So this is the number of protons that I have in an oxygen atom. So now if I know the number of protons, I can actually put that in right here. I can calculate the number of neutrons. So the number of neutrons will equal to the number of neutrons plus protons, which is 16, that's the mass number, minus the number of only protons, which is 8, and I'm going to get 8 neutrons. And I don't know why I wrote 6 in there. Okay, and how many electrons do I have in a neutral oxygen 16 atom? Well, it has to be neutral, right? So I know that if I have eight positive charges, how many negative charges or how many electrons do I need to add to it to make it zero? Eight, right? So in an atom of oxygen 16, I'm going to have eight electrons, eight protons, and eight neutrons. I hope this makes sense. We'll continue these discussions in the next videos.